Welcome to Mindfulness Manufacturing, the podcast for manufacturing leaders and professionals. Designed for high impact on your way to work or unwind on your way home to gain clarity for tomorrow. Step out of your comfort zone and discover new perspectives to add value, get results, and make a difference. Yes, let's jump in. We should all start to live before we get too old. Fear is stupid. So are regrets. All right, Dave. Where are we starting with today? What's this all about? <laughs> hey, that's, uh, you know, that's just something Marilyn Monroe said a while back in a, in a famous quote, if you will. But uh, we're going to talk about fear today. And, uh, you know, fear over the past year, 18 months, has been something that uh, a lot of folks have, have dealt with in, uh, you know, different circumstances. And as we talk about manufacturing and our work and our careers, man, this fear can be paralyzing. What do you think? And that, that fear is usually not about what's happening right now. It's not usually being mindful in that moment. It's usually something that's, you're thinking about what might happen. And that is where we can lose focus. And that's what we just want to talk about today is, you know, some of our own challenges of, I got stuck in fear yesterday uh, for a moment and just try to catch that. And in manufacturing, the industry has been changing so much over the last year, technically on kind of how it's advanced because of COVID coming back into more of a normal or something closer to what it was a year and a half ago, but what does that exactly look like? Yeah. So, so, so much going on and the industry continues to grow. Yeah. Yeah. And, and when we think about fear, I mean, you know, what we're fearful of, I, I, I've become aware of a, a way to address that. And so that we don't get, so that I don't get all caught up and, and paralyzed and it's something that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll lay it out there in basically four buckets. One is, you know, when you're fearful, going back and saying, okay, what am I afraid of? Am I afraid of loss, losing something, or am I afraid of failure, rejection? You know, this fear of rejection is huge, right? And then oh, yeah. you know, the fourth is, is just the fear of the unknown and, and all the what ifs associated with being, you know, the unknown and not being in control. What if this? What if that? And, you know, I, I've started kind of uh, processing some of the fears that I've had and have. And you know what? A hundred percent of the time they fit into one of those four buckets, loss, failure, rejection, or the fear of the unknown. And that's fascinating. It is. And the one, <laughs> there's so many sayings we can, we can talk about and in this field. And one of them is, well, that's the way we used to do it. Or we used to do it this way all the time. And it's always that fact of, oh man, it's so hard to implement change. And, but is the issue just because we're not really addressing the root? Is that the fear of unknown? You just said, Dave, the, is it the fear of change or is it the fear of not knowing what it's going to be? Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it, you hear people say, you know, I, they don't like change. And, and I've said that, you know, I'm not the, the greatest change agent out there, you know, I kind of like the, the known, I like the comfort, I like the control, I like, you know, what's no, what I like what's to know what's around that corner. And you don't like it when I try to schedule a podcast like a few hours before? <laughs> well, you know, that I'm not fearful of that, because, but there's an element of fear associated with that. It's like, you know, oh man, you, now what, right? <laughs> What's going to happen? What if? What if? And, you know, I, I, in my career in manufacturing, man, it was, it was so consistent. I mean, we would get a new plant manager, regardless of the industry, 
the location, the company. I mean, we get a new plant manager typically every two to four years. And the fear that permeated the organization with, oh my gosh, what if? What if they do this? What if they do that? What if they don't like this, you know, uh, direction we're headed or they even function that I, uh, or service that I provide the organization, right? I mean, oh, they're going to consolidate the shifts. And, uh, you know, there was a, a plant manager that uh, was new to the organization that came in that instilled a lot of fear. Uh, when when they came in and I'll never forget it I was fearful I was fearful of rejection in that in my role as the HR director that this new plant manager would bring their own with them and uh, you know I, I at times it paralyzed me I was like well what's the use of even doing continuing on I'm just gonna wait kind of sit back and, and, and wait until this new person either brings their new HR director with them or, you know, tells me my new marching orders and it paralyzed me. And in that paralysis, I found myself and caught myself being irritable, uh, not the most productive and just became preoccupied because of this fear of the unknown and what this new plant manager was going to bring fear of the rejection that what if this is the end of my career as I know it in this organization and then even fear of failure you know what you know if I am not up to par with this new plant manager's standards I would then fail in my job and my position and I'm telling you those that was real. And it even followed me home. I was going to ask that, you know, what, what are the other implications, Dave, that you look back on and, and say that, man, I, I let this thing eat me up. Where, where else did that hit you? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 uh, it required longer work hours, you know, to just shore, shore up and, and maybe, um, you know, circle the wagons, and, uh, you know, I'll never forget when that plant manager came in and in the first week uh, uh, on, on the job, the plant manager pulled the entire leadership team into his office and he said, there's a new sheriff in town. I know who was here and I know why I am now here. And so guess what? Uh, it's time for all of us to, you know, shape up or ship out. I mean, it was like, it was, it wasn't a hostile takeover. It was a hostile uh, transition because of, you know, kind of what had transpired in the past and what this individual's new marching orders were. And so when he pulled us all in the room, you could have heard a pin drop on like, holy smoke, talk about ways to win friends and influence enemies. <laughs> okay. Hold on. This so, guy's getting off to a great start, right? So let's think about that. Is what what was his fear? Bam. You know, he's that's, coming in. That's and, it. Yeah, like he's we all like we all have it. Like there's you we can't not have these feelings. They're gonna happen. The only difference is how aware are we in our own mind? And then that that produces our outcomes. So if you're new leader in that specific situation he's coming into a new plant and that i don't care how much experience you had how much success you walk into a new plant with new people there's some fear and the the question is are you prepared to walk into there without your armor without your title and just be another person to help the team or are you going to go in there and say well i feel a little fearful i'm going to drive the fear into these guys and see what see what happens yeah. I mean, when you turn the tables, that's what's so cool about this. If, if I would have had the presence at the time and was brave enough, I would have said, Hey dude, check this out. There may be a, an element of fear. I know that there, that, that, that there's a lot of unknowns for you right now. 
I know that that you've got a fear of failure in this new assignment from from those who have put you in it. But let's let's transition through this in processing this fear together. You know, if I'd have taken a position like that, man, I could have been fired on the spot or I could have been, you know, <laughs> the hero, you know, on the shoulders, you know, with the, the winning score. So, you know, it, it's just as I've learned over time, man, whatever circumstance in business and industry, especially manufacturing and in a rough and tumble world, man, we're, we've all got fears in different ways and, and, yeah, when, when I had that new plant manager come in, and it was, of course, wasn't the first time, um, that that guy was probably the most fearful of all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. And you just, and you tie it back into again, and what's another fear? The fear of what if I take off my armor with this new leader and tell him or her, what impression that they're making and, and try to get them to open up a little bit by opening ourselves up. But it's that circle that if nobody takes that step, we're going to be in that land of fear. And we know that when people are not psychologically safe, we're going to hold our cards back. And the whole purpose is to try to create this environment where you can get everybody's thoughts and ideas and come up with a better outcome. And when we can focus on the bigger picture, this is not about you, even in that situation, you know, what, what could have been the impact that you could have had not only in the organization, but on this new leader that came in, knowing what we know now to have that conversation. You know, and I, I, and I can't help but think about just <laughs> when, when you learn to ride a bike, when you get on that bike for the first time with or without training wheels, there's a fear of wrecking. There's a fear of going too fast, fear of not knowing how to stop. And at some point you have to address those fears and say, all right, if I am afraid of my inability to stop, that's a fear of loss because I'll end up losing my, you know, I lose, I lose control. I lose, I, I may lose blood. I lose skin if I wreck because I failed to stop. And it, it's like every fear I'm telling you can be put in one of these buckets, loss, failure, rejection, or the unknown, anything from riding a bike to a new leader coming into an organization and laying the law down. It's just uh, this concept of fear, man, I'm telling you, it's been, uh, it's been all over, I guess me, but I've seen it all over the industry and how people are just paralyzed because of this fear. And the biggest thing that you can do right now, if you're listening and you have that sense, because if you don't have any fear at all, then you're just not aware. So there's going to be something. So if there's some takeaway you can take today, it's just the fact of if you can face it, if you can just address it. And if you go back to the bike, if you're in a, a bike race and you're riding that bike and you never pull over and you never stop and, and other people are pulling over to get a drink of water and to do some maintenance on the bike and, and kind of step back and get back in the race <laughs> versus someone that just never, ever pulls over uh, for any time to reflect. Well, are you in this for the long, long haul? Then take that risk. And maybe there's something, someone that you can talk to about that. And it's, and then just looking at yourself, right? Like, what am I creating here? You know, conversations sometimes can create more stress than the reality and just kind of breaking out. Like, what do we know for sure? What's, what's for sure. And what's this fear that I'm creating in, in my own mind? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it just, it makes me think of the, of the one running with their hair on fire and they never stop. They never reflect. They never check themselves and say, wait a minute, why am I running with my hair on fire? And where there is likely an element of fear in there somewhere, right? A fear of not earning 
the money that is needed to be earned, the fear of not performing at a level to get that next promotion or the fear of letting my family down or coworkers down. Somewhere in there, there's a fear right now if you're running with your hair on fire and we've all got it. And like, you know, Trevor, I, I love what you just said. You know, if, if you say you've got no fear right now, you know, and, I, and that sticker that, uh, I mean, there was a decal that was super popular several years ago, no fear, right? And uh, I ain't scared, you know, that type of stuff. And hey, that's a lot of bravado, but at the end of the day, again, if you don't have some sort of fear and a, a healthy way to process it, man, I'm gonna say, uh, there's a self-awareness issue that we might need to check. I'm just saying, Trevor, I don't mean to, I mean, if I've just offended our listeners, I apologize, but I don't because man, if we could all stop living in fear and process it and put it in one of these buckets and begin to deal with it, man, what, how much greater would our work environment be? Man, I'm just going off on it. Sorry. <laughs> Hey, I, and the hair on fire, I, that was an exact comment made by Elizabeth, someone that I worked with and was so successful. And when she was able to start recognizing that she, the, those emotions, those fears were just being manifested and it's not a, dra a, you know, a dramatic roller coaster. You, you're creating that. I mean, you're, you're the one getting on the ride. So yeah. it's just a matter of, can I just like a whole bunch of cars in traffic. If I can just kind of step back and watch those cars go by and not be in the traffic for just five minutes, I can realize that I'm not gonna get there any faster. That's the traffic. So, and I am part of it. And if I can just kind of sell down and get grounded and realize that this is where I'm at right now, what can I do just right now, just to acknowledge that. And, and, and just that in itself um, can put the fire out in your hair. <laughs> <laughs> seems kind of heavy but at the end of the day it's not that complicated and uh to unpack it you know i, I just keep saying again and again you afraid of loss you afraid of failure you afraid of rejection you afraid of all the what ifs of the unknown man unpack it figure it out dissect it it fits in one of those buckets if it doesn't let me know, send me a text, call me, email me, whatever. Uh, I'm telling you, any of your fears can fit in one of those four buckets. Trevor, I mean, what do you think? I'm kind of worn out because this has been intense, but. <laughs> yeah, I know that this excites me because it reminds me of times in my career now that I look back. I'm going to be turning 50 this year and I'm excited because I think just the second half of life is going to be even better than the first half. And when I look back and I say, why did I behave in such a way when I did? And now I know this and we, we do this podcast because we want to share this now. I, I would love to hear, you know, my 30 year old self hear this podcast now because I was in a situation where we were launching a new plant, you know, green, greenfield site, got in there early, first 10 people hired in this plant. And, and, you know, we, we grew it into this fantastic organization that's still there today. And I was focused on success, success for Trevor. And it's like, man, I'm going to like work hard and no fear and strive for that promotion and, and, and lead. And someone and I remember someone saying like, you know, stop focusing on, on where you want to get to and, and just be the best at what you do. Yeah. And I look back and like, what, so why was I doing that? And it was, it was fear, right? It was fear of my own insecurities. Am I, am I a phony? Like, am I really good enough to do this role? Do I need to like, just prove myself to others? And if I could have just and I did this as, as time went on, but it just took me so long was just, Hey, just focus on how do I help others? I, I know what I'm good at and just focus on that. 
And, yeah. and it was just that fear of maybe someone else is going to get that promotion or maybe the fear of, I won't be seen as a peer that can contribute. And, and, and nobody did that to me. There was nobody putting me down. There was no one threatening me. This was all an inside game. And if we can pull ourselves out of that game and, and I, and I find myself able to do that now, because that fear still comes in. The difference now is I can say, Oh, fear. Hmm. I feel it. Why am I feeling that? How can I behave differently? And it's just like, it's such a relief to actually just know that you have that fear. Man, it, that, it just reminds me. And, uh, you know, you're talking about taking your focus off of yourself maybe putting it on others. And I, I, I just, I'm compelled to, to go here right now. And, you know, in the new Testament, it says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and self-control and love is that of which you, when you benefit your neighbor, you take your eyes off yourself, you put it on others. It, it just, I mean, it applies. And, you know, I'm convicted, man, when I'm, when I've got fear, it's like, Hey, that is not, that's not the direction I need to be going. I need to be thinking about self-control, loving other people and just there's power in the absence of, or in the freedom of being fearful. Great example, man. Sorry, but that just pulled that up and out and I, I couldn't help it. That is the essence of what we've learned. And, and it's, it's funny because it's not that what, what we've learned, I guess, it's just more, it's always been there. And it's a great point to bring back, Dave, and you know, written in the scriptures to the science that we see today. And it's when we can stop worrying about ourselves and maybe something that we're trying to strive for and just say, Hey, what's the overall goal here? What's, what's a higher purpose. And I'm not in this alone. Everyone's just like me. Like we all have some fear. Yeah. And if you can be the, the leader and I can, maybe we'll wrap up with this is that if you can, whether you're a leader or not, it doesn't matter. Just, if you can just be that person that comes into work and is comfortable with who you are, that authenticity. It's just power. fantastic. You know, demonstrate power, your presence. Exactly. Man. As Mark Twain would say, I've lived through some terrible things in my life, some of which actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I, I just know it. Sometimes I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, okay, I'm really fearful. I'm stressed out right now. And I know I'm going to look back someday and say, you know, it wasn't that intense as I made it out to be. <laughs> rarely, rarely it is, right? Never say never, you know, I, mean, I would say no, it's never as bad, but I'm telling you in an only, on a, only on a rare occasion, right? Love it, Trevor. Great stuff, man. So when you're coming into work today, or you're even just reflecting on the day, what do you know for sure? What's your own fear? And you know, the one thing you can do to let that go is just to label it, just to just succumb to it, take off that armor, and you will be stronger tomorrow. Yeah. Seems odd. Give it a try. Let us know how it works and have an awesome day. Thanks for taking the time to join us today. How you show up matters. We'd love for you to subscribe, share with a colleague, and tell us what you think. Your feedback's important to provide this high-quality, powerful program that makes a difference in your life and others. Take care. See See you you next time. time.